I am Director of Enrollment and Financial Aid at Burke Mountain Academy. Um, we're really excited to have you here today. Um, just checking to see if we have anybody in the waiting room. We don't. Okay, so we're going to jump right in. Um, so this is our 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 Burke Mountain Academy FIS uh, open house uh, or, or information session. Um, a great opportunity for you guys to learn about Burke um, at a pretty high level. Um, the best way to learn about Burke is to to be here in person for a visit. I'll talk more about that kind of process at the end of our session. Um, but today we're gonna talk about kind of the, the three main components of our school, um, that being the community, um, the culture of our school, um, the academic component, and also the athletic component. Uh, we also have a couple of our uh, BMA students and, and FIS athletes um, on this call. Um, so we'll have a chance to ask them questions. So. I would encourage you to start thinking of those questions now, questions that you wanna ask um, our kids um, and also the staff that are on this call. Um, you should be able to, in the chat box down below, it should only give you the ability to, to chat to me. Um, so chat any questions that you have um, starting now and I'll kind of load them into the hop room and when we get to that section, uh, we'll be able to do that. Um, so before we get to Q&A and the student panel, um, we're gonna go um through those three main components that i mentioned um and we'll start um by handing it off to our head of school willie booker uh who will uh chat about um the kind of the history of burke uh, who we are what we do um and dive a little bit into our our culture and our community um cool so without further ado i will get the screen shared here and Willie, you can take it away. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for taking some time and for joining us. Um, <clears throat> Zoom is not one of our favorite things anymore. Um, we kind of got a little tired of Zoom, but it does have its benefits, and this is one of them. So I hope our, our goal for tonight is just to give you a little insight on BMA and hopefully you leave with a little better understanding of our, of our school and the people who make it up. Um, <clears throat> it is hard to sum up a program in a, in a few minutes or a few slides, so it's gonna be pretty topical, but we'll, we'll do our best. And as Warren said, there's plenty of time for Q&A at the end. So a little bit about myself. Um, I am the head of school. I graduated from Burke in 1996. Um, I grew up in Colorado went on to uh, study and ski at UVM and graduated in 2001. And then from there, I, I went into uh, a career in the ski industry, uh, working primarily for Nordica for about 15 years and then finishing up with Marco Vocal Del Bello. And in my, in my time there, I always stayed close to the school. I had a transformational experience at, at Burke. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a real believer. Um, having gone here myself, um, and I got onto the board of trustees and over the course of a couple stents ended up being the board chair, uh, from 2015 to 2017, and then had the opportunity to come back. And this is my fifth year as the head of school, <clears throat> um, here. I don't think I fit the mold of a traditional head of school, which would be the norm for BMA. Um, I didn't come up through the world of academia or anything like that. I'm here because it's Burke and because I'm passionate about this school, uh, the school's mission and, and the kids and staff here. Uh, a little bit of background about Burke. Um, there's a lot to write, but you know, Warren Witherall founded the school in 1970 with Martha Coughlin and they were trying to solve a very simple problem which was to allow an aspiring ski racer, Martha Coughlin, to ski in, in, uh, while she was completing her academics in the hopes of making the US ski team. And they were successful and the school has been very successful for 50 years since, staying very close to that mission. Um, years later, um, sometime down the road, <clears throat> um, the moniker One School That Works um, was kind of adopted and that's stuck with us. Um, it's kind of a double entendre. We feel that it's a school that is successful, of course, but it, it plays on our love of hard work. Uh, the kids who are here really do work really exceptionally hard. Um, and that's part of embracing the BMA way. And over the course of those 50 years, 
uh, our alumni have gone on to be, you know, very successful after ski racing. And that's specifically because they've worked really hard and uh, that's informed a life of character and values. So how do we do that? Um, and I, I think there's a few, there's a lot of different ways, but Warren, go ahead to the next slide, please. Um, there are a number of different ways, but ski racing is just a really good vehicle for cultivating the character traits that we, we talk about. Um, and the reason is that it's really hard, like many sports, but ski racing has some unique characteristics. Um, it's an individual sport. It takes years of dedication. Failure is, is guaranteed at points in time. Um, I was sitting at dinner <clears throat> just a few minutes ago with two Burke women who were discussing the merits of patellograph ACL surgery versus quad graph ACL surgery. Riley should be laughing because she was a part of that conversation. That's a normal dinnertime conversation here. Um, ski racing is really tough and get trying your hardest to be uh, successful in this sport uh, informs, you know, a lot of character development. So the ways in which we do that, <clears throat> Burke is somewhat unique in that um, we are a school with singular focus. We don't offer a huge breadth of sports. We don't offer a huge breadth of extracurricular activities. Burke is not for everybody. Burke is for ski racers. That's what we are here to, that's the, that's the student that we are here to serve. It doesn't mean that you have to be the best ski racer. It means that you have to be a dedicated ski racer and you have to have a true passion for the sport. It's not an extracurricular offering here. Um, it's a place that, that's for real ski racers. And that singular focus uh, really helps, you know, pull this community together in a very unique way. We also don't settle. Um, we're not very good at compromise. Um, we could make life easier for the students in, in many ways. Um, but we make the program difficult by choice. Um, as I was explaining a moment ago, our philosophy is that failure is a part of the process. And, you know, to put it in kind of uh, vernacular, we put a lot of obstacles in the path because that's what's required to, to overcome it in the end. We're also dedicated to doing the work. And that was something that's, that's kind of um, mentioned in the one school that works moniker. We are unapologetic about making the kids uncomfortable. Um, you can ask the kids about this. Um, we ask them for a lot. We push them really, really hard. We push them to their limits and beyond. Um, and we ask the staff to push to their limits and beyond because that's what it takes to be successful. We are also a values-driven community and we're committed to living by a set of, set of values to be a Berkey doesn't mean to be a great ski racer. It means to be a good person and somebody who's willing to be work, work hard and being a person worthy of trust. We do live by an honor code here and we ask the kids, we give the kids uncommon amount of freedom. And with that comes an uncommon amount of responsibility. Um, and over the 50 years that we've been doing this, you know, that's proven to be a successful model for us. And that's kind of part of the BMA way and something that sticks with you well after you leave Burke. It is also what I would consider an authentic community. <clears throat> you know, we talk a lot about grit. We talk a lot about toughness, but it's also, you know, a really fun place and it's super family style. It's pretty loose and um, we have a lot of fun here. Um, there is kind of a magic experience. <clears throat> um, by the way, I'm in that canoe that's sinking on the left-hand part of that screen there. So the staff and the, st the kids, we really do live together. We have a lot of fun, we work hard, uh, but it is really an authentic community and we are a, uh, a residential community. We ask all the students to board and that's, a, that's um, something that's somewhat unique uh, to our school. So in the end, you know, you put all those things through and um, families often ask about outcomes. You know, you can't guarantee outcomes. However, you know, we do have 
a, a pretty long track record of alumni who've gone on to do some pretty amazing things. Here's just a few statistics that I would highlight. And these are self-reported uh, from our alumni. Um, a huge portion of our students ski after they graduate from Burke. Um, I think that's an important metric to me because it means that our kids are accelerating on their way out of here. You know, and they're not skiing through high school and then quitting and then going on to something else. They're launching out of here and they're, they're on their way to continue to pursue that, that dream that they had when they got into the school, which is an important metric to me. 91% of our, of our alumni reported that the Burke values um, are still a deep part of their belief system after they leave here. Hard work, living by a system of honor, and having a sense of community. Um, you can see a couple statistics about college preparedness. Um, our students go on to, you know, generally to, to great schools. Um, of course, they want to ski race almost all of them when they get into school. So there's a, there's a high correlation between highly selective schools and ski schools in college. Our kids go on to these really incredible schools and they do great when they get there. They, you know, <clears throat> with 31% of our alumni, you know, 40% going to, you know, Dartmouth, Harvard, Middlebury, Williams, or other Ivy League or NEAS schools, and an overall average GPA of 3.4, you can see that they do great. Uh, when they get there. So it's not about the content that they get in the classroom. It's not about some special sauce. It's really about, you know, learning to do the work and being a creative thinker. And, you know, our kids get into difficult situations in life beyond Burke and they're prepared for it because of the, the rigor of the program here and um, learning to, to manage their own time. Those are the things that I think make Burke unique. So that's four or five slides that try to try to sum up our philosophy on how we run the school, why we exist, and who we're trying to serve. Um, hard to fit it all in there, but um, I'll be happy to take some questions at the end. Thanks. Thanks, Willie. Um, yeah, as Willie mentioned, we can ask questions at the end, so feel free to keep chatting those at me uh, or keep them in your mind. Uh, we'll shift gears. Um, it's uh, an appropriate time to jump into academics and explain that. Um, how that works at Burke. Uh, uh, so I'll pass it over now to Ida Sargent um, to introduce herself and to um, uh, open up that conversation. Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for making time for this today. Uh, my name is Ida Sargent, um, and as um, similar to Willie, I had a I'm the academic director here, but have a non traditional um, path to this role. Um, I graduated from Burke in 2006. I was a Nordic skier uh, back when we had Nordic as well as Alpine. Um, and like Willie, it was my time here at Burke was a really transformative um, period for me and made me want to come back um, later as a staff member. Um, after I graduated, I went to Dartmouth and studied biology there and um, raced division one for for the Dartmouth team um, and made the ski team during my junior year at Dartmouth uh, and spent the next 10 years racing for the ski team, uh, including going to the past two Olympics. Um, but during my entire time at Dartmouth um, and on the ski team, for me having um, an academic or some type of mental component to my ski racing was really helpful. Um, I actually completed most of my master's degree online while I was uh, still ski racing because it was really helpful for me to have an additional focus. I thought that benefited my skiing to not always be thinking about skiing. I could focus on skiing while I was training and racing and then have something else to switch my focus on for the rest of the time. So in my role as academic director, um, that's my goal is to bring that, that balance to um, our, our academic program and to our students here. So, our goal um, in our academic program, it's quite different than many schools, um, but it's really to complement um, and support our athletic program. Felix and I, um, you'll meet Felix next, are constantly working together to, to build schedules and figure out how can athletics support academics and how can um, academics support athletics. The two should be working together. They shouldn't be um, in conflict. We want our 
our kids to be excellent students and athletes um, together and have those, those two programs really mesh together. Um, because of that, with, because of the, just the demands of being a ski racer, all of the physical training, um, the travel, the racing, it's really hard to spend the same amount of time in the classroom. Um, so we are not focusing um, as specifically on content as on skill building. We want our students to have the foundation to um, continue to want to learn and to, um, to be students for life rather than just while they're in their classroom. Um, we're, we want all of our students to build critical thinking and communication skills so that when they get into um, a college classroom, a new career, whatever it is after their ski racing or even while they're ski racing, they can be um, filling those goals and really diving deep, deeply into whatever subject they're constantly learning about. Um, so it's a very flexible and innovative academic program that's much different than most. Um, we rely heavily on project-based learning, especially in the winter when students are um, traveling a lot and on many different schedules. Um, and we're hoping that our students will leave here um, owning their own academic goals and their process so that we're, it's a very student-centered approach. We want each student to grow and to continue to learn what um, in their own path, not trying to fit a one size fit all, fits all model. Warren, you can move to the next slide. Um, well, and, and I think I can. Um, All right, hang on. Let me make sure I'm. My, you uh, might have skipped a few, but. Uh, I keep doing that. How do I go back? There we go. Okay. There we go. Yeah. We go. So, one of the, the main ways that we um, have for our student centered learning is that rather than grades, um, we are a considered a non graded school, but we use written narratives or written evaluations rather than a numerical or a letter grade. Students still take tests, um, write papers, they'll receive some type of numerical grade on those papers and tests and um, assessments, but those aren't just averaged out to some final score. Uh, instead, students are um, eat, at the end of each trimester, each teacher writes a letter to their to each student um, about their progress in the course and it's very student centered. Um, so what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses. Um, how can they improve and how can they grow as as students, it allows our kids to to take risks um, to be willing to to dive into topics um, to not be worried about having a bad grade or something like that, but really being able to, to be curious um, and approach learning with that same risk-taking model that maybe allows them to, to push new boundaries um, while training and racing. It's only really possible because we have very small class sizes. Um, so the students get, or the teachers get to know the students really well. And we have that tight knit community that Willie mentioned earlier where, um, yeah, we're kind of all in that canoe together, um, eating meals in the dorm. So you really know the, the each student as a whole, as a person rather than just another kid in the classroom, um, but you know them as the whole human and where can they, where are their room, their areas for improvement. Um, our basic curriculum is that each student takes five classes per year. Um, it's so we don't have quite the same breadth of elective offerings, though I have listed a few that we have, um, especially for some of our older students or juniors and seniors. So many of the FIS athletes have a little bit more opportunity to choose different classes. Um, but we aren't students aren't taking eight different classes because we feel that it's a little challenging to on top of all of the training focus on that many things we're going for quality over quantity um, in all all areas of our academic program in the fall and spring we definitely bump up the academics a little more classes meet four times per week um, during that schedule um, in the middle of two training sessions usually and in the winter classes are meet, each meeting three times per week. Uh, and that'll be in the afternoon um, after a morning of ski racing or ski training. Um, another way that we're trying to, to further complement and um, balance the academic schedule and as well as include a few more elective offerings since we aren't able to offer quite as many during the normal school year. Um, is to now offer or have mini term courses by ski group during the, the ski camp. So um, as I'm sure we, Felix will present soon, the ski prep period 
involves quite a few different camps in, in order to, to travel and get enough days on snow to be competitive. Um, and so we have found that when kids are at a glacier camp in Europe, it's really challenging, or in Colorado at altitude, it's really challenging to balance the training demands as well as the tuning needs um, and recovery needs, and then take five classes. That's just a little bit too much to focus on. Um, and so instead we're having students take one to two classes um, during these two to three week camps and really dive into topics a bit more, build that engagement and the curiosity um, that we're, we're striving for. So um, each ski group then can be focused together, working together on a schedule that fits really well for their training schedule um, and on some different topics that the students are interested in diving into. And again, that usually involves some type of project-based learning. And you can see on the, on the slide, a few of the different topics that uh, we had this past year during our November camp blocks in Europe and Colorado. Um, so I think that's all that I have. Again, as Willie and um, Warren said, if you have any questions, I'll be able to answer any of those uh, afterwards. Great. Thanks, Ida. Uh, all right. We'll, we'll jump right into athletics. Um, I'll, I'll introduce uh, Felix McGrath, who can uh, take it from here. Okay. Hello, I'm Felix. Um, I'm the sport director at Burke. Uh, this is my third year. I grew up in Vermont, so um, I like to think of myself as a Vermonter. Um, I was on a U.S. ski team for 10 years. I was an Olympian, and uh, you can see I was a head coach at UVM for quite a few years. And I moved to Norway. I married a Norwegian and, and had children and, and uh, moved to Norway about 20 years ago and ran a couple programs there. And now I'm really happy to be back in Vermont as the sport director at Burke. So next slide, please. Okay, why don't we, I think you missed the agenda there, Warren. Okay, yeah, so just quickly, we'll, you know, like Willie said, and Ida, it's difficult to, to run really through who we are as a, as a ski program in, in such a short um, presentation, but we'll try to uh, get, get, give you the, the big picture here. Um, so we'll just go through kind of the FIS specific programming, the coaches, the prep period, like Ida talked about, our, our skiing philosophy, how we approach that. Um, and then just be pretty, you know, clear about like the entire program, because we're a big program. We're not just a FIS program. And, you know, the things that we do um, off the hill, and just some collaboration that we have with a Norwegian ski program. That's, that's pretty cool and, and fun. Uh, next. Um, so the FIS women and the FIS men, they train in their own groups. Um, we, we have a very sort of team first approach. Uh, if, if the group is working well and, and motivated, uh, we find that, that there's a lot of success can come out of that with engaged ski racers having fun on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we push pretty hard in the prep period. Um, you know, we, we, we push for 60 days. Um, this is, you know, really data-driven um, from past programming. And these are the days that are, you know, very common um, amount of days for many programs around the world uh, to, to really be the best skiers and be world-class programming, which is, you know, really what, what we're, you know, looking for consistently. Um, it's how you use those, those days um, that really differs from one program to the next. In the winter, we also ski pretty heavy. Um, you know, whether we're racing or just training, uh, we, we ski hard. On um, the FIS women's side, uh, we have a terrific head coach in Kyle Darling um, and Christian Herzog and Craig Sauerbier are the assistants. On the men's side, we have Morgan Corpy, who's the head coach, and Jeff Serjane and Chateau Onsta are the assist assistants there. Um, Daryl Gray is our high performance director and really um, kind of laying out, working closely with the coaches on, on the physical fitness and training. And we have a full-time athletic trainer, Lucas Bonavi. So our prep period, <clears throat> which is approximately 60 days, uh, it starts in... Uh, in May, and we go to Norway and work with our, our partner, Norwegian, uh, 
club, BSK and Dunchy. Um, this program has been extremely successful in Norway and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Our, our current E-team, which is our PG program, is 50% uh, uh, BMA and 50% Dunchy. So that's kind of exciting. Um, we go to Norway again in June. This is an optional camp. Uh, we go to Sasfe in August. Uh, we go indoors and to Hintertooks in October. And then the groups split a little bit. FIS women go to Colorado and the FIS men stay in Europe. So that, that's the prep period. I know that's probably a lot to absorb, but that's what we do. Okay, what do we, you know, really, what, how, how do we do this? You know, how do we ski? Um, well, you can see it right here. There's two photos. Uh, you know, we, we really ski everything. Um, the belief and our philosophy is that to be the best skier that you could possibly be, you need to be good. You need to train on hard snow and soft snow and steeps, flats, super G, GS slalom, speed training, free skiing, drills, Nordic skiing, athletic skiing, we, we like to talk about. Um, we're very specific in how we coach skiing. Uh, the coaches are very united. Uh, but when it comes to the general overview, we, 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 like, we believe in building a very, very large base of ski skills. And by doing that, these are, this is an example of how you would go about doing that. Um, and then, you know, like Willie was talking about earlier, the individual ownership and accountability of our athletes uh, is really the key to the success of the athletes. If Burke is a, a, a place where if a, a ski racer comes and is motivated and engaged, they're gonna, they're gonna like Burke. So next. Um, <clears throat> to quickly go through this, it might be a little bit confusing, um, but if you start on the far left, we have uh, an E-team, this is our PG programming. We have two levels there uh, with two really good coaches, um, three really good coaches there. Then you can see the FIS women and the FIS men in the middle and our U16 program. And then we have a, a pretty, uh, you know, pretty large junior program and a, a, a pretty serious U14 program as well. So, you know, the off snow activities aside from, you know, that are based on athletics, um, you know, we have the, obviously the dry land uh, component the athletic evaluations, physical tests, assessments, athlete management, equipment management. And we have this really exciting program, um, collaboration with this Norwegian ski program. Uh, we just had uh, three of their athletes visiting us. We currently have nine Burke uh, students uh, racing and training in Norway this winter. So this is super exciting. And in this age group, uh, we will have an opportunity to uh, train side by side with similar aged uh, Norwegian skiers. And this program is, uh, you know, really kind of, this was the first year we were able to do this. Uh, COVID had kind of blocked this for us, but now, you know, we're kind of hitting our stride with this. So that's it from the sporting side. And I'm happy to take some questions at the end. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank, thank you all. Um, stop sharing. There we go. Um, great. Um, so as, as everyone's mentioned, we will do a Q&A session at the end. So hang tight with any questions that you have. Uh, we'll shift now um, to our student panel. So we have tonight a few students, uh, current students who are with us. Um, and I'll ask them to introduce themselves in just a moment. Um, but now is definitely the time if you have specific questions um, for our students um, to go ahead and, and chat at me, uh, chat the question you have, and, and we can um, ask the question. So I encourage you to start typing those questions away now. Um, uh, so yeah, why don't we why don't we jump in? Uh, why don't I see uh, Poppy and Kate there? Why don't you guys take it away? And again, uh, students, if you guys just want to name, grade, uh, where you're from um how long you've been at bma um and uh yeah and then we can go into questions hi everyone i'm poppy um i'm a senior i've been at berks as an eighth grade so like about four years 
and I'm from Stowe, Vermont. I grew up in Stowe. Hey guys, I'm Kate Dance. I'm from Brisbane, Australia, and this is my second year at Burke. Um, either Luke or Riley, you guys can pick it up. I can go. I'm Luke Dwyer. I'm from Lyme, New Hampshire, so not too far away. I came to Burke when I was in eighth grade, so I was going into my fourth year now, and I'm a junior. Hi, I'm Riley McHugh. I'm from Middletown, Connecticut, and I've been at Burke for five years. I'm a senior now. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right, I haven't seen any questions come through. Unfortunately, I have a few teed up here that we'll launch into, but uh, don't be shy. Uh, ask your questions. Um, to go ahead and type them in, or if you really want to uh, speak up, you can unmute yourself and raise your hand. But um, to start, um, why don't you, can you guys tell me a little bit about why you came to Burke? What, what made you uh, decide this was the place for you? I can go. Um, I was introduced to Burke the year before I came. My brother came here. So I had firsthand, well, secondhand uh, view of what was going on here. And everything I saw I liked, it was a competitive atmosphere where pretty much everyone had a common goal, which was to ski as fast as you can. And it really drew me in. It was a tight knit community, small community. It was a uh, good fit for me. And I thought it would be the best steps for advancing my skiing career. Riley, Poppy, Kate, you guys just jump in. Yeah, I came to Burke um, kind of the same place as Luke, but I was a lot younger and my older sister came here and she just, everything she said about it made it sound like so fun and cool. And I also really liked that everyone had a common goal and we were all kind of striving for the same thing in our own ways. And that definitely is like 100% why I came. Um, for me, coming from Australia, I had a, quite a distance from Burke, so I had some family friends that were here prior, and they were um, quite interested for me to come, so I was super excited, and I loved the atmosphere, all the people. As soon as I got here, it was very different to what I was like at home, so I loved it. Yeah, I think I came to Burke. Um, I really wanted to go after I visited, and I saw the vibe on campus. I also didn't even get to ski when I visited, but I got to go in the RBC and work out with the rest of the U14s at the time. And I really liked how everyone was working hard, even if it wasn't on the hill. Awesome. All right, we got a few questions that came in. Um, thank you, Kim. Uh, let's see, what surprised you most about Burke that you did not expect? You guys can just popcorn and jump in, fire away. I feel like the vibe of the people, like you kind of come and you're like, oh my God, like a new school, but everyone is so like welcoming and you jump like right in the first day doing like a ton of like activities and workouts and physical testing. And like that moment that like you do your first set of box jumps, you're like, okay, like this is my community. Like I want to be here. And that was like really, really cool. Continuing that, uh, my first day at Burke out of quarantine, cause I came um, during the COVID, um, was uh, physical testing and knee touch squats. And I was super nervous. But my favorite thing about Burke was when I got up there, no one knew who I was. And all of a sudden I heard people cheering for me and it was, I just felt like I belonged somewhere, which I hadn't felt before. Yeah, for me, it was the camaraderie between all the students. You can see it through physical testing and just even just hanging out at night, especially in the fall and spring when everyone's out on the basketball court, volleyball court, just getting along, listening to music, having a good time. Just everyone getting along, having a good time definitely was a surprise, even when we didn't know each other extremely well. Yeah, I would agree. I think the friendships that you build at Burke are, will last a lifetime. I was 13 when I came here and a lot of my friends have, obviously I'm a senior, a lot of my friends who are older than me have graduated and I still call them every day. I talk to them every day. Even my friends who are in, living in Andorra in England, I'll still talk to them all the time. So I think the friendships are what surprised me the most. Cool. All right. Um, why don't you guys comment on what your day to day looks like? And maybe we'll focus on like what the winner looks like um, as a fifth athlete. Um, can you guys help paint that picture? 
Yeah. So in the morning, um, we wake up kind of around like seven, seven thirty, and we have a warm up on your own or as a group. It kind of depends. And then we have breakfast at seven thirty, and we usually all leave. Um, depending on the session at like 8 30 and we ski for about two, two to four hours it depends if you have like a single or double session and then we come down and sometimes we have a workout before a little recovery and then we go to lunch and we go to class for a few hours depends well, on the day sometimes we'll have three classes a day and then before classes we'll have an hour and a half to get go to your room have a shower do whatever you want before class and then we have classes till five of five and then uh tuna skis and go to dinner and then hang out with everyone <laughs> other color you guys want to paint to to stuff that you do during the day or I think that pretty much like? it. yeah just you use every second of your day to your advantage really you're either working hard getting your uh on your skiing and improving there or off the hill too, doing recovery or going to school, doing your homework, tuning. It's a great, yeah. Yeah, I can attest to that. I, I was trying to get the student panel together and I uh, was really lucky to be able to steal some time from these guys, but there was, there were certainly a lot of folks who you know, told me too much homework, too much tuning. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so busy, busy, that's for sure. Um, cool, all right. Um, we got a question about, uh, let's see here, um, about like, what do you want, what do you want to do after Burke? What are your, and what are your ski goals? Um, and this can be obviously pretty individual, um, but maybe you guys can talk collectively about yourselves and your peers um, as to what you're, you know, what you're hoping to do and what you see yourself doing later on. Oh uh, yeah. So my goal since I came to Burke was to ski in D1 in college. And that is still my goal today. So everything I do it is to on the hill is to try to get to that point and try to become the best skier I can be to uh, complete that goal that I set a while ago. Yeah, I have very similar goals. Um, I'm probably going to go to college next year and do that. But I might take a gap year. Depends on how uh, the season goes to see if I want to go farther in skiing or if I want to go to college and just ski there, <laughs> Division One. Yeah, um, as like Riley said, I'm also a senior this year, so we did apply to college. And um, that was always a goal for me to ski D1 in college and kind of take uh, more like a NCAA path, kind of depending on like where you are. Um, and just, yeah, do your best in that. Um, for me, I come from Australia, so it's a little bit uh, different for me because I'm not American. But uh, see how everything goes. Definitely ski in college and then see where my career takes me from there. Awesome. Uh, cool. Let's change it up. Uh, what's, your, what's your favorite um, BMA tradition or uh, kind of yearly thing that you really enjoy and, and then explain what what that is uh for me it's physical testing it may not seem like it's it's fun in its own way it, it's not fun while you're doing it but the camaraderie between all the students and the uh and just you can see the friendships between everyone and how everyone gets along with each and every other student in that and it's really refreshing to see my favorite tradition is definitely GMR. Uh, we haven't been able to do it for the past two years because of COVID complications, but it is the most fun thing you'll ever do. Um, it doesn't sound fun also, it's one of those things. Uh, basically everyone gets a four mile leg and you run the four miles as fast as you can. And it's a 24 mile rate, a 24 hour race to get from the Vermont, Massachusetts border to the Vermont Canadian border. Yeah. 
My favorite work tradition is definitely soccer. Um, as Willie mentioned, we don't have kind of like an array of other sports, but we do have a soccer team in the fall and we do it every year. And it's so fun because even if you have no background with soccer or a lot of background with soccer, we all really bond together on the field by playing all the games. And this year we were undefeated. So <laughs> it was really fun. Um, for me, I would say just the fall and the spring nights that was what really helped me last year we had so much fun on the basketball court everyone listens to music everyone jumps out there I don't think there's anyone who doesn't come um and if you don't come then someone makes you come so it's it's super fun everyone comes together as one awesome um thank you guys um what do you think about your 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 nightly average for homework like how many hours very much depends on the night and how much I have to do. It can range from an 30 minutes to a few hours, depending on how much I procrastinate and uh, the type of work in case we have like a project doer depends. Yeah, I would say like an average would be an hour and a half each night, maybe two hours. It also helps Sunday is uh, one of the days where we really get to catch up on homework. I feel like um, we have something called brunch in the morning, which goes from 1030 to 12. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I like to get get all my homework done, try and get as much done for the week, especially during the winter when we're away at races and everything's a little bit more busy. So things catch up on you a little bit more. So on Sundays, I like to keep my work. Yeah, and as Luke mentioned, you kind of try to use every day, every minute you have in the day. So if that means doing your homework, like right when you get off the hill or like during a period right after lunch or during your free, like I feel like everyone just tries to get it done when they can, but it's about like an hour, an hour and a half. Very cool. All right. Um, I think we've got time uh, for just one or two more questions for you guys. Um, how about um, like, how is, how is Burke? changed you um and maybe let's do like a two-part question um how has burke changed you as a person and, and how has burke changed you as a ski racer yeah i can start um burke has definitely made me a more confident person you can definitely be yourself here and that helps build confidence for sure so and also a lot of my values have been adapted to the Berg values. Hard work has really been instilled into me. I was not the hardest worker when I came here, but you definitely have to learn to pick that up. Or if you come into it, it makes it a lot easier. So that, and as a skier, fundamentally, I have come a long, long way in my skiing. And as a result, speeds have picked up as well, which has been really, really good to see. Yeah, I think as a person, I've become more selfless. Uh, when I first came to Burke, I was just taking my own skis out of the van. And now I, this is just a little something I've noticed. I, now I unload everyone else's skis before I unload my own, usually, um, unless I'm in a rush. But then <laughs> um, I, um, how it changed as a skier, I'm, I, you, before I came to Burke, and I still sort of am, I was more of a send it down the hill without thinking, more send over technique. And now I can think critically about my skiing and sort of analyze what I'm doing run to run. Um, for me, on the personal side, I feel like I've been able to be more responsible and accountable. Um, over last year being my first year, I definitely learned some lessons and I feel like they're kicking in this year. So I feel like I've become a better person for my entire team and for myself as well. And on the skiing side, I feel like I've become a stronger person and someone who's able to fight. Um, I would like to say I used to do that before, but it's definitely come more into my routine now. Yeah, I've been at Burke for quite some time. So I've really gotten to see myself kind of develop as a person. I mean, I came as an eighth grader and now I'm a senior. So I feel like um, a lot of people and like the community and the values have helped change me into the person that like I wanna become when I leave Burke. And that's like a really cool thing to see. And then on the athletic and skiing side, um, the whole environment and community have kind of taken like help me just 
become like such a, like self-aware and um, way more hardworking and taking a lot of accountability for my process. I feel like over the past few years, I've been able to kind of accept where I am, my own process and focus on myself to help me achieve my goals that I probably never would have thought I would have achieved when I was in eighth grade. Awesome. Thank you guys. Super insightful uh, and reflective. Last question for you guys, and then we can let you fly and be free because I know you have stuff to do. Um, can you talk a little bit about how teachers work with you, especially like during the, the winter comp season um, with, with academics? If, you, if you're traveling, obviously as, as fifth athletes, you guys are traveling a good amount. How does that work? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Luke, do you want to go? <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. I'll go. Uh, teachers are definitely super flexible with our schedules. Uh, fl flexible enough that if we have like a real issue, they're always willing to help. We have two times a week in the winter, we have something called flex period, in which you can go to any of the teachers' uh, classrooms or offices and get help with the work you're behind or you need help with, which is super helpful for us, especially being on the road so much and missing classes. It's a good time to get caught up in that aspect. Um, one of the best things I've found about Buck is um, the smaller people in your classroom. Uh, you're able to make relationships with your teachers and that way you're able to communicate with them, email them all the time, get caught up and use them as a tool rather than be afraid to talk to them, which I find is really important, especially during meal times. If you're struggling with the project, you can talk to them at lunch and they'll help you out. That's a, I use that all the time and it helps me. Yeah, luckily, because Burke knows that like we're traveling all the time and we don't have all the time in the world to just be sitting in the classroom all the time. It's really helpful to be able to have like email and just like use like communicative tools um, to keep your teachers updated or use days where you have more time to like stay ahead of your work. But if you need like help ever, like have a question, like they're so good about responding and just like being there because they know your schedule. Not only teachers, but also students as well. I always come to the upper class men or Poppy or anyone who's older than me to help me out if I'm struggling as well, which is important. Cool, awesome. Um, a big thank you to you guys for taking some time out of your nights to share your Burke experience. You guys are more than welcome to stick around if you'd like and listen to the other questions, but you're also uh, welcome to, to jump off and carry on with your evenings. So thank you guys. Um, we'll transition you. now to just like more general Q&A. Um, so our students won't, looks like they're saying bye, bye guys. Um, our students won't be on for this part, but uh, uh, Ida, Willie, Felix, uh, myself can answer any questions. Um, we do have some that we can go right to, uh, but feel free to continue to ask any questions. We've got about 10 minutes um, before the hour. Um, we, we know that it's uh, you know late at night for all of us or most of us, um, unless for those of you on the West Coast or in the mountains out West. Um, so we'll, we'll try to wrap it up within the next 10 minutes. But um, we, we did have a question about our PG program. Uh, this, this program, while it is a, a FIS open house, uh, is more directed at our academy kids. Um, our, our, we do offer a PG program. I don't know if Felix or Willie want to touch briefly on, on that and, and where we are with that. Um, I think we can spend just maybe 30 seconds answering that question, um, and then we can, we can move on. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, obviously, you know, we have a pretty robust uh, PG program. And uh, currently, you know, I think we have 19 skiers on that program in, in two different levels. Uh, we will for sure continue uh, with our PG programming. It, it tends, it does tend to move a little bit. Uh, currently, it's mostly a collaboration with this Norwegian program. Uh, but, you know, really the goal with those PG programs is, you know, make your national team or go to Division One school. That's pretty much that simple. Awesome. Um, and for those of you who are interested in our PG programming, uh, feel free to follow up with me after um, just to make sure you're on the list um, to get notification of, of when the application opens for that. Um, we have a question also about... Um, you know, just the lack of snow in the east or or I guess before Thursday, the lack of snow um, and how it's impacted training and racing opportunities. 
Um, so if uh, Felix and really want to touch base on, on that, maybe more specific to Burke, how, how that's impacted us or hasn't, um, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, I could take that. <clears throat> um, well, yeah, first of all, we were able to execute a, a fantastic prep period, which really, you know, had us ready um, in December. And, you know, we are lucky here in that we have our own training venue, uh, very specific with a T-bar. And, you know, it's like, so we pretty much from relatively early in December uh, with, you know, machine made snow, uh, yeah, trained. We, I don't think we missed any days. And, uh, you know, the natural snow came later and the mountain got more and more open throughout December, but, you know, it was really quite good. Um, it impacted the race schedule in the east in early December, uh, but since then the race schedule has pretty much gone as, as we'd hoped. Awesome, thanks. Um, Ida, do you mind just touching um, on that question about um, how academics, uh, teachers uh, support students while they're traveling um, and what that looks like? Um, I know the kids had answered that, but I think it could be helpful to hear your perspective as well. Absolutely. And I, I thought the kids did a, a great job answering that. Uh, they, the communication part is a big piece of that, um, letting us know what their, what your schedule is, um, especially as fifth, fifth athletes, everyone's traveling on slightly different schedules. Um, and the teachers have a general idea of who's going. Um, the coaches are constantly updating a calendar that we have. So we know who's going to be in class and who's not. Um, so there's a lot of emails going back and forth. We're always um, asking students to, to check email frequently, um, reach out whenever they have any um, questions. We use an online learning platform called Canvas. Um, so all of the assignments and resources are there and available for the students, syllabus, homework assignments, um, things like that. And, but really the communication is the, the key part for, hey, I need a little extra help. Um, and then the, the teachers are available for either flex periods, free periods, um, often the mornings if kids have a training session that ends earlier, we're, we're available to help. So um, we, we enjoy being able to connect with the students um, individually. So we're always making time for that. Awesome, thanks. We have one more question here. Um, so if you have any other questions, feel free to um, type them in. Um, otherwise, um, this will be the last one, but uh, keep them coming. We've got a few more minutes. Um, question about mental performance as a component of our program. Um, I don't know if maybe, Willie, you want to take that one and, and touch on what we're doing there? Yeah, thanks, Warren. Great question. And this is one area of the program that's always, um, in some ways, we have an institutional approach. And in other ways, we're constantly learning and trying to adapt and, and improve. The institutional approach is kind of that, that the Burke way and um, a big part of our physical strength and conditioning and our team centric approach that Felix mentioned is about um, preparing yourself to understand that you can overcome and having a team support system so that you are supported for the 23.9 hours when you're outside the race course each day. Um, so that's a big part of our philosophy here in, in giving the kids the tools to understand how to, how to be tough, frankly, just to be tough because it's such a rugged sport. There are obviously um, great external tools that are available. We have a partnership with um, a college in Massachusetts, and they are sending two sports psychologists up to school uh, for one day each week. <clears throat> and they're meeting with teams, and they're also available for individual perform uh, performance meetings uh, with athletes. That's a new program to Burke this year, and we've had some really positive results with some of the ski groups. Um, not all the ski groups um, have, have really embraced that model yet, um, but we're encouraged by what we're seeing. There is still, um, I would say with, you know, certain groups, particularly teenage boys, it's a little harder to, to, to crack that um, stigma that going to a, a mental performance coach can be a, a positive 
training rather than a reactive problem solving, you know, so we're still working through some of those things. Um, but we do have uh, a strategy and approach and, and we seem to get a little bit better each year. Awesome. Thank you, really. Um, I didn't see any other questions come in. So I'll, I'll kind of wrap this up. Uh, just to talk briefly about uh, process. Um, uh, some of you on this call have already uh, inquired and kind of started the process. Uh, a lot of you have not. Um, so I'm just dropping a link into the chat. Um, that's our inquiry forum. So if you're interested in kind of learning more and applying or learning more about the process, feel free to click that link. Um, our admissions process um, uh, applications are due March 15th. So it's just a little over a month to complete applications. However, uh, the way that we operate, just given the, the massive volume of, of interest that we have for the very few spots that we have, um, especially at the fist level, um, is, is we ask families and athletes to inquire. Uh, we request video. And upon evaluating the video, we determine whether, um, you know, uh, opening the application is an appropriate next step. Um, if you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, but we're, we're kind of coming into the season of, of uh, applications being due and, and uh, starting to um, build up that applicant pool. Um, so um, I mentioned visits at the beginning of the session. Uh, visits are kind of that like next step after we decide that an applicant is uh, within kind of our, our bandwidth, right? So if uh, athletically a, a student is kind of within our range, we then uh, invite them to apply, but also to, to visit campus. And that's the, definitely the most important and rich um, uh, aspect of the process because uh, you really get to pick up the vibe. You get to meet all, all the kids. Um, and as you could probably tell from this session, they are the highlights, not us, the adults, um, of what makes this place special. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so if there's any questions, feel free to reach out. If you have any specific questions for anyone on this call, I'm more than happy to connect you. Um, I'll put my, my uh, email address in the chat as well. Um, but if there's no other questions, then we will close it down for tonight. And we hope this was just was super informative and helpful. Um, and uh, we hope you guys are all having awesome season so far. Um, so enjoy your night. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Thank you.